I'm just videoing crap now. You gotta get used to a camera being on you all the time. Back to my channel. This week I'm going to take you through the final part of making a Durmstrung costume from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. If you click up here somewhere I'll throw in a link to the first part where I made the jacket and started on the cape and in this part I'm going to finish the cape, make the pants and sort out the belts. Yeah. <laughs> so without any further ado let's jump on into that. The first thing I did was make a dye bath according to this mixture on Rick's website. Then I added the fur to this near boiling water and I let it sit for a few hours before pouring it all out. And look how promising it looked. So the fabric didn't dye exactly how I wanted it to. I'm still not really sure what I did wrong. I had the right dye for the right sort of fibre it was. I used heat. I actually used more than the recommended amount of dye for it and it just, it hasn't taken. I'm suspecting that the actual fur strands themselves might have been a nylon blend rather than 100% polyester like what was stated on the website because they're the only part that's not really taking the dye. As you can see, they're still quite white and light rather than the nice brown I was going for. Anyway, whatever. When I take these costumes to the Wizarding World with me, in August this year I'm going to replace the fur in it to be something more accurate. I really should have just splurged for the brown fur in the first place, it would have saved me all this hassle and honestly it would have saved me money in the long run as well because I thought I was saving money with the original fabric but because of the amount of dye that I've used on it it's now costed the same as if I bought this in the first place. It's just been a mess. <laughs> So the first part of any project is to lay your pattern pieces out and begin cutting them out. And here are some interfacing which I will use for the waistband part. Finally, transfer all of the notches and markings that are on the pattern pieces and you're ready to start assembling. I began by putting on the fly first, starting with the facing. Here I'm giving it an understitching before pressing it so that it'll lie nice and flat. Now on to the front of the fly, I am doing the buttonholes first. And sewing them in place on the front of the pants. Now it's time to attach the front and the back of the pants together. I do this at the side seams only first, just so that I can lie the pants flat and then put the side ribbons down the side. This makes it so much easier in the long run. Alright, so the pants are almost done. All I have left to do is to sew the inside seams left together and then to put the waistband on. So first we apply that interfacing to the wrong side of the waistband, then turn one of the edges up 1.5cm and sew that to the other side that isn't interfaced. Then I turn it right way out, pin it to the pants and sew it down. Waistbands on. So now I've just got the two little tabs to do that sit on the back here. And then I've got to put the buttons in the front fly and they're done. This here is actually a magnet that I brought second hand and I'm going to use it as the belt buckle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the strong glue on the back and glue it to the stiffened felt. Then after letting it dry for 24 hours underneath something particularly heavy, I cut out the excess black around it. Then I sewed two strips of this one inch wide felt to the back and this becomes the belt buckle. Hello! So it is a new day of working on this costume. As you can see, we're pretty much done. This is the home stretch. All I've got left to do now is the belt that goes across here 
and the cape. So join me today as I figure out how I'm going to make this cape. <clears throat> the first part of the cape was really easy. I just lay the two fabrics together on top of each other and then sewed along two of the side edges and that giant bottom curve along the bottom, funnily enough. Alright, so I've got the bottom half of the cape done here. Now I've just got to figure out the top flap that goes along there and that is the cape done. So for the top part of the cape, I pretty much followed the exact same way that I'd made the larger portion of the cape, just smaller, obviously. Also, hot tip, if you cut fur on the back side using a craft knife, you won't get the fur particles flying everywhere about your sewing room. After sewing the top bit together in the same way as the larger part, I basted it along the top edge and then I sewed that top edge to the top of the cape and voila, cape. Now because this top belt was too small, I decided to cut it in half and then I added some holes so I could sew an extension part into the back. Now I didn't mind doing this to the belt because this part actually gets hidden underneath the cape anyway and it makes it adjustable. Well, I mean the buckle in the front also makes it adjustable but hey, double adjustability! Anyway, just really happy with how it's looking and the next time you'll be seeing this, it'll be in the final reveal. Woo! So there you have it! That is how I made the Durmstrung costume from Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, all things considered. I'm not too fond of the fabric choice I used, but I didn't want to make it from the wool, which is what they used in the film, because I didn't want my husband to overheat in it when we wear it in Florida at the Wizarding World. Now I'm quite fond of him, I want to keep him in one piece. It doesn't sit nicely. It doesn't really have a nice drape or anything to it so I am really reconsidering making it out of a natural fibre before we go over. Oh why do I do this to myself? <laughs> I'm really happy with how the cape turned out. It's got beautiful swish and movement and it's great. The belt's perfect cannot fault them and I love that the little magnet became the buckle. Great. Woo! Oh yeah, the pants. So, <laughs> I measured Cameron and I made the pants according to his size that he would be on the back, right? They're far too large for him. Gosh, I think they're honestly about four inches too big for him in the waist. I mean, on one hand, it kind of doesn't matter because you don't see the top of them because it's hidden underneath all the jackets and they're held up with suspenders anyway, so... But on the other hand, they're huge. They're absolutely massive on them. If you're making those, I would size down a size. If I do remake this before I go overseas with it, I'm probably going to bring in the part here. I'm going to move that in a little bit, because at the moment I think it's sitting too close to the shoulder. I should have just left it how I originally patterned it, but look, whatever. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Happy with it overall. Might make it again. Who knows? <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to thank you guys so, so much for watching this. If you liked it, please hit the like button down below. And if you really liked it, it would be pretty cool if you could subscribe as well. I do a lot of content like this, a lot of costume recreations. I try and upload a new video every Friday on my channel. Usually something crafting, costuming, sewing, or fun related. So, 
If you like what you see, I'll see you here next week. Thanks again for watching. Bye.